Hi babies, how are you? It's your girl Hazel Dior back with another video. I'm gonna switch it up. You know, I talk about a lot of trans topics and stuff. I'm going to talk about some scary shit. Like real life facts. Everything I'm going to be talking about is happening in real life. Either by me or by people that's very close to me. It's like five in the morning. I'm alone, of course. So it always gives me chills to talk about this type of stuff. A couple days ago, I had this dream. My auntie used to stay in this house. This is what I remember. My auntie stayed in this house for years. I was like in the bed in my auntie room up the stairs because you walk in the house, you go to the left, and then you go up the stairs. And then once you get upstairs, you make a right, a slight right, and then boom, you go in, in her room. So I was in her, in the dream, I was in her room, in the bed, like sleeping, like with my eyes closed, but I'm waking a dream. And I know that I'm in this house. I'm like, oh my God, like how the fuck did I get up in like this house? Cause now, now um, in present day, my auntie don't live there no more. Don't no one live there. It's completely abandoned. My uncle owns a house. He used to own it, but now it's like completely like foreclosed. Like it's an abandoned house. It's all boarded up and everything. I'm just hearing footsteps like coming up the stairs and shit. Even though this is a dream, I'm going to tell y'all what this lead up to. I'm hearing footsteps walking up the stairs. And in my dream, I'm trying to go back to sleep because I'm so terrified. I'm like, oh my God, like how the fuck did I get in this motherfucking house again? I'm trying to think in my mind, like, okay, it's completely dark in this house. It's the winter time. It's cold. I'm in a bed, but this house is abandoned. I don't have my eyes open at all in this dream because I be real terrified like that, even in dreams. Like, it's something scary going on, terrifying. I'm not going to have my eyes open. I don't want to see nothing. So in my dream, I just land out on a, in the bed with my eyes closed. And I'm like, okay, I got to make a run for it. Like, I got to run to the door. When you came in this house, did you lock the door or leave it open? I don't even remember coming in the house in a dream. I just went to sleep in real life and had a dream about sleeping in a bed. And I know I'm in this house. I know I feel the, the presence, everything. I'm in this house in her room. I don't know... How I know I'm in her room, but I was. No, I felt someone get in the bed in my dream. I just lost it. I just jumped the f like jumped the fuck up. Like oh my god, oh my god. Cause I was like, <laughs> gonna make a run for it, like to get out the house. Cause I'm just panicking. Cause whoever got in that bed in my dream, they started rubbing my hair. It felt so real. And when I jumped up, like shaking my head, like I'm trying to like, I don't know. Like, this can't be real. I woke up in real life, and I, and I was jumped up in real life. Like, I stood up and everything, the same as I did in my dream. Oh, my God. I was laying down in the dream. I was laying down in real life. This same motherfucking house, though. So, as I'm talking to um, my mom, 20 minutes after, I woke up and everything. I'm like, Ma, this is crazy. I just had a dream about... You know, the house that my auntie Pam used to um, live in. Really? And I was like, yeah. And I explained to her. I'm telling her everything I just told y'all. 
She was like, wow, I actually just got off the phone with your auntie and we were just talking about the house for the longest. She was like, we was on the phone for like over an hour talking about that house. I'm like, what, really? So she was just telling me experiences like that happened there or whatever. She was like, yeah, because you know, I used to live there before my auntie. And that was like, if I'm 28 years old, then that mean that was about 28 years ago. So bitch, 28 years ago, when she lived there, she said she was sitting in the living room, watching TV at night. She said it was like two, three o'clock in the morning. You know, it's dark in the house. It's a living room, big living room. To the left is some stairs that go upstairs. I heard some footsteps coming down the stairs. So she looked and she said she saw a fucking sailor man, a army looking sailor man, Navy man, whatever, in a white suit. <laughs> he had his hands on a guardrail. He was like coming down the stairs and his head was completely gone. He had no head at all. Scary as fuck, right? She saw this man coming down the fucking stairs. He had no head at all. She's like, that is so interesting that you just had this dream. And like you heard the footsteps coming up and down the stairs. I'm like, yeah, I just heard footsteps coming up and down the fucking stairs. And no lie, my mom always told me I was like a special kid. Not special in like, you know, autism type of way or anything. We was talking about other stuff. And she was like, you know, when I was pregnant with you, you was born with a veil over your head. And I'm like, what is that? She like, it's something special. Like you are a special kid. If you're pregnant and you're at a funeral and you look down in a grave and see, I guess a loved one or someone special to you, you're gonna be born, your child gonna be born with a veil over their head. My granddad always told her, that one right there, that's a special child. Make sure you take very good care of them. Like, and my mom always treated me that way. I never really thought, you know, twice about it. I'm like, wow, my mom really treated me like, like a gift from God. The same day, I purposely, because that's in another city, I purposely drove to that city and I went to that house and it was abandoned and covered and boarded up. She also goes to proceed, proceed to tell me when I was younger, about five, six years old, she was in the living room. It's, it's during the day. And I'm, I'm in the living room as well. I'm sitting on a couch, just kept looking out the window. I guess I went to I went to the door and I was like talking to someone. I said to my mom, I said, Ma, someone at the door. Baby, ain't nobody at the door. I'm like, yes, he is. He's standing right here. Really? Like, well, what do they want? I told her. He said to stop worrying, like you always stressing about stuff to just stop worrying. And that was so interesting to her. She was like, you know, I know my baby not making stuff up, like what's going on? So we drove over to my grandma house that same day. My uncle passed away. She was very close with him. So as we go into the photo album, I seen the picture. And I said, oh my, that's him right there. That's the man. I synced him. That's the man I was telling you about. Oh my God. Like, this is who my baby was talking to. Like, he came in spirit to our home to, like, deliver a message. I told her I saw him pull up in a truck. It was like a truck. Somebody dropped him off. She, and she said, um the truck that he was in his friend used to always be driving around in the pickup truck drop him off like he would always get dropped off the clothes that i described everything he had on like she was like what do he look like what did he look like what made her drive over there to my grandma house in the first place because 
she asked me what do he look like and I explained everything you know head to toe wow that's what my brother had on in his casket when he you know passed away but that's what made her drive over there to my grandma house and had me go through the photo album because she knew that I was going to point him out my uncle he never been there we didn't live there that long for he never been to that house before you know he was passed away long before any of that and I used to literally see him get you know pull up and get out of the fucking truck somebody would drop him off every day I'm like oh my god because my mom used to tell me too um, that I had a gift that she believed I had a gift to um, sense spirits and stuff and that's really fucking true honestly and I still got it to this day I can sense um, things but I try to block it out because bitch I, I be real terrified I ain't gonna lie I be scared as fuck it's so scary and I don't want to freak myself out to like bitch I don't know I don't want to pass out I don't want to blank out have a seizure like I don't want to get that terrified you know so I always try to block it out and I do have a gift little do you hoes know I really have a gift and I can sense things otherworldly I always been able to but I try my best to block it out my mom and my sister both told me when I was younger, about five and six, that they would um, take me over to family member houses that they felt was haunted or had a, a presence in them. And I would tell them things about the house, stuff they've been experiencing. My sister house, what do you feel about this house? Like, what is off about it? And I would go and I went in my sister room and I'm like, there's something in here in this closet it used to be a huge hole in this in this closet i actually remember this some of the stuff i don't remember based on you know i just know from them telling me but this one i remember i was like in this closet it's a huge hole in the wall like and and it leads somewhere like like i don't know it has something Whatever presence or spirit is in this bitch, it got something to do with this hole and this wall. At the time, the wall was, it wasn't a hole in the wall, but come to find out, when my sister, <clears throat> when the man who owned the house, he patched up a big hole in that wall in that closet. Right. <laughs> Another one, because I can go on and on about this same house. This sailor man with the head chopped off. My uncle seen them. My auntie seen them. And my cousin seen them. This same scary ass fucking person. And let me remind you, this house, right before it got foreclosed and abandoned a few years ago, this uh, childhood friend of a of family member of my sister, she lived in the house. My uncle rented the house out to her. This bitch was cray cray, honey. She was fucked up in the head. People in the neighborhood telling my uncle when he was in the area because he had other houses in the area they would go to my uncle like hey you know that girl she got somebody held hostage you know in that basement it's a, it's a man over there so he like what so baby my uncle went over there he went in the basement and it was a man tied the fuck up rope roped all up he was bloody he had black eyes the man was a grown man, but he had a, he had autism. He was, you know, not, not there. He had a lot of problems. And this lady, 
was beating him day by day. He was kidnapped for over a year. She held him hostage for over a year. This man was missing, getting beat on. She was raping him and every fucking thing. I'm like, was this bitch possessed? My uncle evicted her right in and there, and she went to prison, honey. She's still there, and she got a long motherfucking time. I don't know how long that bitch got. I forgot, but she got a long time in that same fucking house. So you know it's something going on. I don't know what, it, baby. And in that basement, when I was 15 and 16 years old, I used to keep having nonstop dreams every day, no lie, for a good three months about this house. I'm like, why do I keep thinking about this house? Like, I I never used to be over there like that. When my auntie lived there, it used to be every blue moon. I stayed there when I was a baby. I don't remember staying there. I'm like, why is I'm thinking about this house after my auntie moved out um, two of my girl cousins their sisters they ended up staying there so I remember my um, I was over my sister house at the time she stayed right around the corner from there so she had called me she said hey cuz can you um, watch the kids you know I'm gonna go out and have a good time I'm like oh yeah yeah but I knew motherfucking well I was going there to that bitch by my motherfucking self. Because at the time, my my um little cousins, they were, you know, like babies and stuff at this point. So it was nighttime at this time. And I remember my nephew, we was very, very close. He would always be by my side. He's, you know, of course, way younger than me. He's... I don't know how old he was at that time. I can't remember. He probably was like 10. i say he was like 10 years old. And I remember he was sleeping because he has <laughs> he had to be at school the, the next day. And I was not going there to that bitch by my motherfucking self. I just kept waking him up. I'm like, get up. Like, baby, Jay, get up. Bitch, I can't go here by myself. Oh, you got to be... <laughs> My scary ass was not going to that bitch by my motherfucking self. And I got him up, too, and he came. Baby, he missed school and everything. <laughs> he did not go to school, honey. And while we was there, because this is like 2 o'clock in the morning, we was like just snooping around just seeing they got some food or whatever. The cereal boxes just started falling off the fucking refrigerator, the top of the refrigerator. We were like, oh, hell no. We just ran upstairs. So I remember we stayed up for like two hours after hearing all that shit and was able to lay down for a little bit. Now, mind you, we were sleeping in the girls' room. So that's where me and my nephew were sleeping. But the girls wasn't in that room. They wasn't even in their own room. So it was like so weird. Woke up because we heard a whole bunch of noise downstairs. And I'm like, oh, that's my cousin now. Because they so, you know, loud. They drunk. Belligerent. But I'm just hearing, you know, like commotion. Like, you know, a group of people talking. That's what I'm hearing that. So I'm just like, oh, it's them down there. You know, we feel comfortable, like, to lay down. So we lay down for a little bit. You no, know, they like came up right the sun is up and shit me and my nephew you know put on our shoes and stuff and baby we went down upstairs going out the door as soon as i opened the door my cousin getting ready to unlock the door to come in both of my cousins did you just leave and you know come back <laughs> wait whether you were just here she was like mm -mm. they had they was drunk they just got back from the fucking club. They was hanging out all night. And we like, what the fuck? And we heard y'all hoes down there. Like, we heard... We heard y'all hoes making all this noise. We didn't know if it was them, but we assumed that it was our cousins. Because we hearing a group of fucking people talking. Like more than one voices so we like oh yeah it's gotta be them like you know we didn't go down there to check 
because I wasn't assuming anything. I'm like, I just heard it. You know, we can we can both hear it. You know, if like your auntie and your uncle and your grandma in a, in another room, and they all talking like at one time and laughing. It was kind of like that. And so, bitch, I'm like. I was like, oh, no, let me get the fuck about this bitch. And that was the last time I ever been to that house. And I was boarded the fuck up. The last person that lived there was the crazy lady that kidnapped that man. There is actually more stories to this house. I'm going to have to talk about that in the next video. <laughs> I was actually planning on talking about, like, about four or five different situations but i didn't know this video was gonna be like this long so baby that makes a couple more story times it's like we're just hearing stuff so i'm like really really scared and i'm like oh my god i can't leave because you know the baby's just here i can't like leave though i'm supposed to be watching them the butt babies i love i gotta just keep looking that way baby because you know, I'm a frightful ass bitch sometimes. Okay, I love you so much, babies. You have a great, amazing morning, night, or evening. And I wish you the best of luck. Oh, tell me some of your scary journeys in like a quick, short little paragraph in the comment section if you would like. Thank you. Bye, babes. Love you.